Welcome to this introductory tutorial for Eon Fusion. This tutorial will provide you with a basic overview of Eon Fusion's functionality. Mouse clicks have been highlighted in this video tutorial. Left button clicks are shown in red and right button clicks in blue. First of all we will look at the general design of the Eon Fusion application. This will help you to understand the various layout options that are available and to know where to find important commands. When you first open Eon Fusion, you should see windows organised like this. Window layouts like these are built via a combination of tabbed, floating and dockable windows. In this case we have a single docked window in the lower portion of the screen and a group of tabbed windows in the upper portion of the screen. Tabbed windows give you an efficient means of working with groups of windows that don't need to be viewed at the same time. The lower window, which is currently docked, can be added to the group of tabbed windows by right-clicking its title bar and choosing Tabbed Document. Alternatively, it can be set up as a floating window by right-clicking its tab and choosing Floating from the context menu. A floating window can be positioned anywhere in the application. To redock the window, right-click its title bar and choose Dockable from the context menu. The window can then be positioned and docked appropriately. Docking a window will automatically adjust the overall layout to fit. These layout options give you a lot of flexibility in how you set up the application. We recommend that you spend some time experimenting in order to find a layout that works best for you. You may have noticed that unlike many Windows programs, Eon Fusion doesn't have a menu bar at the top of the application window. This is because the majority of commands are context specific and are available through the right click or context menu. You'll see more examples of the context menu throughout this and subsequent tutorials. Non-contextual commands are available from the menu button at the lower left of the application, known as the Eon Fusion Orb. We will now look at scene views in Eon Fusion. Scene views, or scenes, are where data is presented for exploration in a four-dimensional environment. Here is an example of a scene in Eon Fusion. You can navigate in scenes using the mouse. The middle mouse button, or scroll wheel, is an essential part of 3D navigation in Eon Fusion. Zooming is achieved by rolling the scroll wheel up or forwards, which pushes the data away from you, or rolling it down or backwards, which pulls the data towards you. The rate of zooming is determined by the closeness of the data that is under the mouse pointer. You can move the data around by holding down the middle mouse button and moving the mouse. The data can be rotated by holding down the control key and the middle mouse button while moving the mouse. Panning of the viewpoint is achieved by holding down the shift key and the middle mouse button while moving the mouse. Holding down the shift and control keys and the middle mouse button while moving the mouse up and down will increase and decrease the vertical exaggeration of the scene view. The slider here at the bottom of the scene view is used to navigate in the time dimension. We will return to the slider and some other aspects of scenes later in this tutorial. Using Eon Fusion version 1.1 or later, there are alternative navigation options that do not require the middle mouse button. See the Eon Fusion manual for more details. We will now look at the data flow view in Eon Fusion. Data flows are structures similar to flowcharts. They are used to access, combine and manipulate your data. Navigation in data flow views uses the same model that is used in the scene views. Zooming is controlled by the scroll wheel. Movement is controlled by holding the middle mouse button and moving the mouse. The structure of a data flow follows a basic pattern from left to right. Seen here at the left in dark blue are data source objects. These objects load data and make it available to other objects. The green objects are called operators. As a very general definition, operators manipulate data in some way. There are many different types of operators available in Eon Fusion for many different purposes. You can see that the data sources, sources are connected to operators using pipes. These pipes act as conduits for passing data from one object to another. The orange object is the data flow's representation of a scene view. Various pipes bring data from objects in the data flow into the scene. The data carried by these pipes is the data that is available for visualisation in this scene view. Objects in the data flow are selected by clicking them with the left mouse button. Selected objects are highlighted in light blue. 
multiple objects can be selected by drawing a selection box around them. Objects can be added to or removed from the selection by holding the control key and clicking them with the left mouse button. New objects are created in the data flow view by using the context menu for the data flow, which is accessed by right clicking on the background of the data flow. Objects are specified by a general object type, data sources, data writers, operators and views. For each of these object types, there are multiple objects that can be created. See the data flow tutorial and the Eon Fusion user manual for more details about the specific objects that are available. Properties of an object are accessed using the properties option on the object's context menu. The item's properties are shown in a separate dialog box. This example shows the properties for a scene object. An important part of the data flow, and of eInfusion in general, is the data structure view. There is a separate tutorial for the data structure view, however we will look at it briefly here as an introduction. The data structure view is accessed from the context menu for a specific object. It contains a visual representation of the data that is output from that object. In this case we are looking at the data structure view for this bathymetry shapefile data source object. The data consists of a set of points with locations defined by vertices in X, Y and Z coordinates. Each point or feature also has a unique ID and a depth attribute. The details pane at the left of the data structure view contains information about whichever item is under the mouse pointer. A table view can be accessed from the data structure view by right clicking on the header of the relevant attribute group and clicking view table. In this case we will look at a table of the vertex attribute values. This reveals the values of the individual data points. Individual attributes within a group can be graphed by right clicking the attribute and clicking the graph option. This is a useful tool along with the table view for inspecting the data. We will now return to the scene view to examine some important aspects of that view. First of all we will look at the scene slider which we saw earlier but did not examine in detail. By default the slider controls the window of time that is visible in the scene. Moving the slider forwards or backwards moves the window of time to a later or earlier time while displaying the same time extent. Adjusting the positions of the slider's endpoints changes the extent of time that is displayed. The time slider controls the fourth dimension in Eon Fusion's four dimensional scene views. We explored data structure views, we can now make some sense of the scene contents pane, which appears in the left hand portion of the scene view. You will now recognize these dataset representations. Datasets represented here correspond to the datasets that are passed into the scene via pipes in the data flow view. The scene contents pane is where visualizers are added to the data. Visualizers are the objects that convert the raw data into the visual elements that you can see in the scene view at right. For example, this visualizer is called GPS Track and it is attached to the 1D lines attribute group within the GPS Track vector set. The visibility of a visualizer can be toggled on and off by clicking on the aptly named visibility toggle at the left of the visualizer name. You can see here that toggling the visibility of the GPS track visualizer turns the green line in the scene on and off. Multiple visualizers can be attached to the same attribute group. We can see here that there are two visualizers attached to the 2D surfaces attribute group in the bathymetry vector set. The uppermost visualizer, in this case the digital elevation model with aerial photo, appears on top of any subsequent visualizers. If we toggle its visibility off, then the digital elevation model colored by depth visualizer becomes visible in the scene. These two visualizers provide an example of the case where the same data can be visualized in different ways by using different visualizers. 
Rule sets are specified in the visualizer properties. Rule sets determine how the data is interpreted on the screen. Setting up and using visualizers is covered in depth in the visualizers tutorial. An important final note is the ability to move and zoom the background of the slider in the scene view. Zooming is performed by rolling the mouse wheel up or down. This is useful for controlling the amount of time that is represented in the slider at any given moment. You can also move the slider background from side to side by holding down the middle mouse button and moving the mouse. If the slider is not visible on the slider background, an arrow will appear at one end. Clicking on the arrow will take you to the time slider. This tutorial has provided an introductory overview of Eon Fusion. Please take the time to view our other video tutorials to learn more about the components that you have seen here. Thank you.